early 90s, we really want to expand and develop the Hong Kong market. And in those days, any company could be listed had already been listed. We really need to look beyond Hong Kong. The circumstances were such that China was about to open up and uh, the government, central government, wanted to reform its state-owned enterprises. So that was led to the creation of the HCM. There was a lot of uncertainty at that time, and I was privileged to be at that time with the team on the SFC side being the main person to structure the framework. We were really into uncharted waters. We thought that it's worth a try, and uh, there was really sincere desire and effort on the part of our counterparts on the mainland part that they want to make the listing of the H share a success. So those are the kind of challenge that, you know, there was no example and some 25 years later it is now the Chinese or Chinese mainland related companies are 67% of our market cap which is something that no one had anticipated before. And also, it was in that process that Hong Kong became an international financial centre. So that was a challenge when you do something that you don't know where it will lead, and you do have to, one, upgrade yourself. You can't just sit around and wait for opportunities to come. So you have to upgrade yourself constantly, and you have to be on the constant lookout for opportunities. At that time, when I was at the CSRC, it was in the early days of the market. So the challenges were more on trying to instill some discipline on the market. Uh, corporate governance and etc. these are relatively new concepts and you have to get the company who are listed to abide by the rules. There are consequences if you don't abide by the rules. It's not like the rules are only there uh, for you to be admitted to listing and then you can forget about it afterwards. So those are a different kind of uh, challenge. In Hong Kong, I would say most often the junior staff will not voice their view, even though if they don't necessarily agree with the senior people on the mainland, they don't necessarily disagree, but everyone has to speak. Everyone around the table has a turn to speak. Most of the time, people will just repeat what you want to hear. But there are times that people do express their view. So I would say that I would hear more different views on the mainland, which is contrary to what one would think normally. I think it's improving. I think um, it's more a culture, very much for an institution itself. It's the leadership style, the leadership and courage, and want to really hear what people have to say before he or she make the decision. I think that message very quickly will go down into the management. Well, I think we've been able to attract talents from different parts of the world. My concern is that our local talents need to be more competitive to get to know the world uh, because financial service is a global industry. It's not enough just to know our own region, but really to keep abreast of what's happening in the at the rest of the world. Thank you.